12 schools have already booked their place at the 18th stage of this year's National Science and Maths Quiz, and more schools will be joining. But we do know that these uh, students or contestants cannot do without mentors. Well, at the new end block of the University of Ghana, students uh, are being mentored by a physically challenged person who taught them about how to take chances. Nancy Emefadra Josi has been interacting with his mentor who are standing or competing against each other for their schools are smart but they need something extra to make themselves better and ready for the job market today we had a mentor who taught them about how to take their chances and how to take advantage of the internet just like he did i have been joined by mr kwame sapong he's a writer he's an educationist and he's also uh, with informa uh, I, I, I hope I got it right. And from my technologies, thank you very much for your time, sir. I'm interested. You spoke a lot today about they taking chances, grabbing the internet and using it for something productive. I want to believe that there's a story behind this, a story behind why you chose this topic. Why? Um, let's start it this way. Everything, like I said during the mentorship session, everything started for me in 2014 in MFA. I was fired from my job. I was given no reason. I went home and I was crying because I knew that it was true troubles for me now. I'm physically challenged and unemployed. Who's going to employ me? So then a friend came over to my house. We had done some internships before at Alliance Frances. And he came over and he said, No, Kwame, you don't have to do this. You've got to educate yourself. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that meant. He said, no, use your internet, use the internet to your advantage. Use the internet, use the power of the internet. It's a learning tool. You just have to know where to find the information and how to use it. So I'm going to teach you. First thing that he taught me, reading. Reading. I was conversant with it because I studied literature in high school. So reading, writing, reading. I did all the Shakespeare books. I've done all of them. I've done, I've done as you like it. Um, I've done thin, um, things for La Pacino, Achibe. I've done all that. So it was easier. But he said this time, read books that would change the way you think. Read books that would change the way you think, the way you see the world. One of the books that he first recommended, I told, I told, the, I told the group, so be so good they can't ignore you. And it spoke, it spoke to my challenge at the time. It's by Carl Newport. He said, so good they can't ignore you. And it, he talked about, Carl talked about all the things I talked about today. <laughs> Develop yourself to the point that even the UN can find you for a job. Even though you are, you are, you are maybe you are, you are doing another job. He, he called it career capital. I think it's in the chapter five of that book or something. Yes. And then he taught me several things. And he said languages. He told me languages. I said, how does language help me? He said, Kwame, you don't know. You have no idea. You could work with the embassies. Now, I don't speak all the languages I'm learning fluently, but just conversational. I can understand certain things and respond in way. Now, I've built myself up to learn every language within six months. It's doable. You can do it because when you watch the internet, you can see people, especially on YouTube, people give free sessions of how to learn certain languages like French. You can learn French within six months. But I can start a, some mini conversations with anybody in all those languages I know from Brazilian, Portuguese, to French, to, to, to Chinese. All these are self-taught. You can sit on the internet and boom. And so I was here to inspire the kids to see, because MFA, you and I know, five years, six years from now, these kids will be graduating from the university. They will come and add to the unemployment pool. I have been there. It took me four years. Four years. MFA, I'm not kidding. Four years to get a job. It was tough. It was tough, and my brother had to give me money, money all the time for upkeep. Money all the time for upkeep. I had gone from interviews to interviews. Sometimes I'd be climbing stairs and tell me, they come and tell me just at the entrance, hey, chief, the way you are climbing the stairs, we are not sure you can do our job. 
and my brothers will be pissed off. I had to go home. Oh, our job is, especially, you know, most of them, the dominant ones are sales jobs. So you can't do a sales job. It's fine. I had one CEO tell me my, Google, my CV is a Google CV. I just took a Google template and wrote everything there. And I said, I wrote everything myself. I did everything myself. Everything that you did, you see there, I did at the former camp. I did them. I wrote them. As I started talking, when I went for the interview and I started talking, he apologized. He stopped the interview and I apologized. He says, I apologize to you, sir. You're more intelligent than you think. But you might be hiding in your disability thinking that you are not intelligent. You've got to change that. So that's how it started all for me. And I want to inspire young people in Ghana especially to do the same. The government, yeah, they'll try their best. They're trying their best. Every government, the NDC and people will try their best. But we've got to take up our own mantle. We've got to have our own story. We've got to do our own story, our own way. We've got to change the narrative. We've got to do it in our own way. That will be successful to us. 10 years, 20 years from now, we can tell our own success story. But there's, there's this very important thing, interesting thing that I, I listened to when uh, Mr. Kwame, Kwame Sapong Kwame, Kwame was um, given the children or the students earlier. He mentioned that he took up a teaching job online. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that before. How did you come up with that? How did that go for you? Um, I, I've told you that I'm passionate about languages. So I was, um, there's an app called Quora. Quora, it's, they say that it's, it's the Facebook for intelligent people. So when I was introduced to Quora, if, if you're on it for a long time, you get friends. So you network. And, and I had one Indian guy tell me that, look, since you're passionate about languages, there's an app called Speaky. And he showed me another app, Hello Talk. So I got on Speaky. I started talking, just networking with people professors, lawyers from different, different countries. So most of them that you get to talk to them, you take their contacts and all of them kept telling me, Kwame, we want to teach you our English. We want to teach you our language. But we don't speak English. Can you help us? So I got tons of questions, people asking all the same thing. Can you help us? So I had to teach English. I had to teach English. I write my own stories. So for example, I can imagine, sorry, I meet someone, let's say MFA, and I'll be doing MFA voiceover, and I'll be doing Kwame voiceover, and I'll be doing all, all on audio, and I, send, I do all these things on my phone, and I send it to them. I write and I send, and I take my time to, it will surprise you that most of them have started speaking English, but first they couldn't speak on the tongue. Now I do it for free. Now I'm looking for funds and money to build an app so that they can go subscribe, and, which most of them have even suggested to me that let, build an app, let's subscribe to it, we'll pay. But it was something out of nothing. It was something that I was doing because I love helping people. I, me as a person, pers I love helping people because people help me. Where, where I am today, you see my boss sitting on the other side. He helped me. He did, he, today, today he hasn't seen my CV. He, hasn't, he doesn't look at my CV. He doesn't need to. If you ask me, tell you he doesn't need to. Because I'm doing it. I don't know anything about computers. I'm, I learn every day. But I'm committed to learning it because I want to change that narrative. I want to change that thing that, oh, disability ends your life. Sometimes we talk disability is not inability, but we do not make it practicable enough. So when I was coming this morning, I was thinking of what to tell them. I just drafted everything in 30 minutes. Because I wanted it to be practical for them. Something that they can, something that they can sit at home. They don't, need to go to, they don't need to go and register and leg on to learn. They can learn from their house. They can learn with their phone, as long as they have the internet. You can do all these things.
Nancy and Mafadra Josie there joining us from the University of Ghana, Lagos. There's more happening today at the National Science and Maths Quiz. We'll be bringing you all the details that you need to know and competing schools as well. Uh, we're also streaming live on our social media pages, so please do so. Uh, later today, we have a Kumuman, Ghana Senior High School, Tamale Drobo for paying a lady of Mount Carmel, Tamale Islamic Science Schools, and um, Pope Jones Senior High School, uh, Sunrise, and Adventist girls will also be competing. But coming up shortly now in business, we'll tell you how the lives of workers in the free zones enclave are endangered by toxic emissions from some steel factories. Darokwa is standing by with details.